AT&T says that less than 10% of its network has lead-covered cables and that the telecom company actually halted plans to remove two lead-clad cables from Lake Tahoe after a Wall Street Journal investigation charged that AT&T and other telephone companies abandoned thousands of toxic cables on poles, underwater, and in soil across the United States. Tom Neltner is the Environmental Defense Fund Senior Director of Safer Chemicals. He was involved in developing the lead testing protocols in the Wall Street Journal's investigation of abandoned telecom cables. And Tom, you've been uh, studying lead for how many years? Oh, Becky, good morning. I've been working on this for over a quarter century, um, mostly in Indiana, but nationally as well. I mean, uh, talk a little bit about lead, because in talking to you yesterday, I learned a lot of things that I didn't understand before. Lead is pretty pervasive. It's naturally occurring. It's not like PCBs that were man-made. So it is everywhere. Were you surprised by what the results of this journal investigation found? I was. I've been, as I said, I've been working on this for a quarter century. And about a year and a half ago, when I first learned of it, I was shocked. I had no idea that there were so many lead pipes out there. So shocked that we decided to invest in getting a contractor who knew how to go out in the field and do dives and investigations to go out and take samples to figure out, are these pipes really there? These lead cables really there? And if they are, are they releasing lead into the environment? And we found that in the affirmative. And the Wall Street Journal did a great job of looking at that issue, but going much further and confirming that the lead that was in the soil was from the same was the same lead that was up on the cables strung between telephone poles, or was in the wa uh, was in the pipe that's running under the water uh, right near it. Uh, this has caused a lot of consternation in the stock market as analysts try and figure out, analysts and investors try and figure out what the potential exposure is for all of these companies. AT and T stock hit a 30-year low earlier this week. Verizon shares had a 13-year low earlier this week. And, uh, you know, the company has kind of pushed back. AT&T has said, look, this is not our entire network. Part of the reason that AT&T got hit so hard is people said it's got the most of the leftover uh, cables from Ma Bell and those older cables. You said some of them going back to the 1800s are the ones that are of the biggest concern. Um, AT&T says it's less than 10 percent of its cables that are out there, if you're looking at it, and not only those, but of those 10 percent, they're talking about only a third of them, I think, that aren't buried in sediment where you would not bring these things up anyway, that are encased. Um, a lot of people trying to figure out, get their arms around this, and there have been some questions raised from the journal's reporting of a, it being an independent investigation, not knowing that you and other environmental groups were involved. What would you say to all of those concerns and questions? Well, first, we didn't learn. We had no concept of how broad the problem was until AT and T did a court filing out in California that said that they have sixty-six thousand miles. That'll go around the Earth two and a half times of cables that are running either between telephone poles or running underwater. That is much farther than I ever imagined. I thought it was a very localized issue. As regarding the, what Wall Street Journal said, you're best off asking them. I'm not privy to their decision making. When we sent a letter to EPA on Monday asking them to investigate this issue, to really do a real risk assessment and figure out what the long-term solutions are, uh, that's the first time and we released our report that explained our relationship and our role in it. In, in that letter that you sent to the EPA, you asked that the company stop plans to remove the cables from Lake Tahoe. Why, why is that? Well, we didn't ask them to stop plans to remove it from Lake Tahoe. What we said is for underwater cables, disturbing the cable, moving it around, especially in areas with a lot of sediment and silt uh, along the Hudson, for example, you, you can release and make a bigger problem. So you have to do it thoughtfully and carefully. And... AT&T took that to say that means that we should stop work in Tahoe. That's their decision. We're not involved in that litigation. What we are is saying that you have to be thoughtful about the underwater. But the ones, the, the thousands of miles run between telephone poles that have been abandoned, those are pretty easy to remove without any problems. And those are kids standing at the bus stops below those lines, not realizing that overhead is a a lead pipe, a lead cable that may be dripping lead accumulating in the soil. They just don't know that. So it's best to just to remove those lines. What, what, what does lead do? I mean, I think a lot of people realize it can lead to um, 
mental deficiencies not developing at the same rate? You've, you've studied this for a long time. Yeah, good question. Over the past 15 years, we've really realized that there is no safe level of exposure to lead. That's come through a lot of studies that every time they looked at lower levels of lead in the blood, they find that it causes harm. For children, which is where we're really concerned, it reduces the IQ. So there's a correlation between lower IQ. It's not a lot for an individual child. With a child with a low elevated, with a low blood blood level, you can't see a loss in IQ, but when you look at it across the nation, it's significant. For adults, it's kidney and it's heart damage. So cardiovascular disease is associated with it as well as kidney disease. You know, people look at remediation as one cost. They look at any potential effects on humans as another potential cost. But it's pretty hard to say when and where you might get lead poisoning. I mean, it used to be in paint. We've tried to remove it from um, most fuels. But it, it, it exists. It's naturally occurring. And it exists in a lot of places. Well, it's naturally occurring. But much of the, much of the lead that we're typically exposed to is from man-made activities past use in lead and gasoline. But we still have it in our homes with lead-based paint, and we need to address that. Because when that paint comes off the walls, when it deteriorates and forms dust, we can get children exposed that are playing on the floor and you know, with the stuffed animal and then the blanket, that kind of exposure. And for those in Flint and across the nation, the federal government has invested $15 billion in getting the lead service lines replaced. These are the drinking water lines that connect the main under the street to homes. And that lead in the pipes gets into the water and exposes children and families. So in a spirit of healthy communities, we need to reduce, we need to prevent that exposure wherever. Because the water, at low low, at water the lead still leaches into that water and can expose us, whether it's in a lake, whether it's in a stream, or it's in our drinking water. The water utilities do a lot to reduce that leaching into the water, uh -huh. but we still have this problem of drinking water through what's essentially a lead straw.